So I want to do at least one project in the class involving some database stuff. Um, we're going to do database both in, I guess we're definitely going to do it in Windows, but some things are simpler and a little bit easier to understand in Linux, and it's good to be able to do Linux development as well as Windows development anyway. You'd be surprised how, how much um, how many development shops out in the world use Unix instead of Windows uh, for back-end stuff, you know, like banks or in, in other industries. So it's, it's good to be able to uh, navigate and develop in Linux as well as Windows. So let's do a C-sharp programming project involving, uh, involving Mono, which is the um, environment in which you run C-sharp code in Linux. And um, we'll also do some database development in that environment once we get there. So um, I want you to... If you can, if you already have Linux running on your system or something, then you're good. You don't need to do anything. Um, if you don't, then you need to somehow get some kind of Linux distribution. Uh, so one easy way to do it, if your system is is fast enough, and almost all systems are these days, is to just install a Linux installation and and as a as in uh, a guest OS in VirtualBox. So I'll go over how to do that. Um, and probably not any other way either. Uh, so if you want to actually install Linux on your system, that that would be great. But I'm going to leave that to you. So if you if you want to set something up like I have here with VirtualBox, you need to download a few things. So first, you need to download um, Oracle's VirtualBox, and hopefully you can see here. I just Google download VirtualBox, and then um, I got a link. The very first link is is here. Um, to Oracle's VirtualBox um, software, and then I want to download it for Windows hosts because you know the system that's going to be hosting the OSs is the host OS. And as you can see, I'm using Windows here, like you presumably are too. I guess if you're using Mac, it'll be a little bit different. Um, and if you actually, I don't know a lot about Mac. If you if you are doing stuff on a Mac, you might be able to just use that because OS X is based on Unix. So a lot of this, but the 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 specific instructions that I'm going to give are not going to work on Mac because I'm going to use um, specific properties of the way software is installed on Linux distributions that descend from Debian. And so you won't be able to follow these instructions exactly, but maybe you can still get your system your system working just natively on your Mac OS. Um, okay, so this is where you download VirtualBox, and I'm going to assume that, that you can get this working and stuff. It's just downloading and installing an application. Once you get VirtualBox installed, if you open it, it'll look like this, except that you won't have any operating systems yet. Um, so to get those, you need to download an ISO, or a disk image, an installation disk, the image of an installation disk for some Linux distribution. So there are lots of Linux distributions. Um, and the one I recommend is Debian. I'm going to use Debian anyway. But let me mention some other, other things you could do. I don't know if you can see this text. It's really small. Um, but, oh, that's a little bigger, huh? Well, that just does nothing. Um, so on. In my documents folder here, I've downloaded the ISO for Debian, for Peppermint, which is a small, a small lightweight version of uh, Linux Mint, and I also have uh, an edition of Ubuntu Server here. Um, so I'm just going to do these instructions for Debian. But if you if you had rather use Linux Mint or Ubuntu um, or Peppermint, all those should work more or less exactly the same. Um, I guess I hope that maybe Debian is a little bit smaller. I don't know if that's actually true. Um, so this says download an installation image, and that's probably what you want to do. And down, so this is a little scary. Here, the cursor is pointing to AMD64. Uh, that's because I have I actually have an Intel processor. That doesn't matter. My processor is 64-bit. Um, if your processor is not 64-bit, I'm not positive what to do, but I would try this, I guess. Try i386. Um, if that's an issue for you, let, let me know, and then we'll, we'll deal with that as a special case. All right, so I'm going to assume that you now have uh, the disk image. And so once you have the disk image saved somewhere, like I have mine saved here, um, how do you load... 
how do you load a new um, a new operating system into VirtualBox? Well, I'm just going to click on I'm going to do it. I'm going to click on New here, and then it says Name uh, Name and Operating System. So I'm going to say let's just call it Debian 2 because I already have Debian, and here it says Type is Linux, version is Debian. That's good. And um, it says how much RAM do you want to allocate to the virtual machine? And this will depend on how much RAM you have in your system. Here I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it re really just needs one or two. So I'll give it, you know, two gigabytes. Actually, I think one would be fine if you have a two gigabyte system. So that's, that's fine. And now just click through all the defaults here. You can read those if you want. Um, I'm just clicking next. Okay, and now here, what you're setting here is the maximum size that your hard disk can ever be. Um, here I'm setting it to uh, 23 gigabytes. Um, so it's not actually going to take up that much space on your hard drive because this, this virtual hard drive is going to grow dynamically. And so what you're doing now is just putting an upper bound on how much it could possibly take of your hard drive. So I put, I put this one at 28. And uh, now what? Okay, so here it is. It's been created, and hopefully you can see it says Debian 2 powered off right here. So I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to go to Settings and click through. It's nice to be able to do uh, bidirectional clipboard. I've never done drag and drop, but that sounds nice too. And under System here, the base memory is what we said. Uh, you can give it more processors if you want. I'm just going to give it one processor, and that looks good. Uh, the video memory you probably want to push up. I'm going to push it up to uh, 74, and if you want, you can click Enable 3D Acceleration. That might cause that might make life a little bit difficult, but I'm just I'm going to do it. It'll make uh, it'll make it lets the virtual machine use your your 3D graphics card, so it'll make the movement a little bit more smooth. And that's it. So there's some other things that you can set here, but let's not worry about that. So, okay, that's the settings. Now I'm going to start it for the very first time. And, okay, so now I have to find the ISO. So where this is depends on where you saved your ISO. You can see I have, I have one right here. So I'm going to select Debian 7.1. AMD 64 and I'm going to click start. So what I just did is I selected the ISO that I downloaded from Debian. And now it, this is going to take a while. Um, so click install and this pro this whole process might take about 30 minutes depending on um, depending on your internet speed. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to go through the whole thing on this video. <laughs> Uh, because it takes a long time. You can see that it's downloading and downloading and downloading. Uh, maybe I'll be able to edit this stuff out later. Uh, okay, but what did I do? All I did was click through the defaults, right? You do have to make a few choices at some point during this process, but um, it's it should be pretty obvious what to do. Blah, blah, blah. Host name is Debian. Sure, that sounds good. Um, I don't care about the domain name, so continue. And root password, this is very important. You do not want to forget the root password or you will not be able to use your system. Um, so um, this, is the, this is the password that's going to control everything about your new operating system. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, just remember it. Okay. Write it down, something, make it your usual password. Um, now th this screen is asking you to um, give the full name of a user. So my favorite username is Hunter. That's probably not yours, but you can you can pick whatever username you want. Okay, and um, select a username for the new account. Okay, that's fine. And uh, password for the user. So I'm going to use the same password as the root password um, because I'm not really paranoid about security. If you really were, you would probably you you want the user to have less privileges than the the root. You know, the root is the Unix version of the administrator. Um, okay, sorry. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So I made a mistake. 
and so the root user can do anything and therefore you should be careful who has root ac access to your machine all right i'm saying that i'm in the eastern time zone so are you uh, blah 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 doing a bunch of stuff i'm going to just say use entire disk say yes 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 and um, here you have, have to actually say yes, so yes. By the way, you know, this is totally obvious, but if, if at any point I go too fast, y y I'm a recording, and so you can pause me and then do, you know, or, you know, back up or fast forward, whatever. Hopefully this won't take too long. The internet connection I have here at home is about a thousand times faster than the internet connection that they have at John Jay and hopefully it's the same at your house uh, looks like nothing's gonna happen here for another couple minutes you might want to go make a cup of tea do to do to do, do, do. Um, it's actually going pretty fast Somebody told me a really bad joke lately. There was a contest at Mad Magazine to come up with the most pejorative phrase, phrase possible for Belgians. And the entry that won was the sentence, uh, Belgian is the most pejorative word possible. When I say that to people, sometimes they laugh. Maybe you just did, probably did not laugh, actually, you know. Can you see that I'm just clicking yes and yes? So, I mean, here this is where I'm going to download uh, the missing files from. So there are probably smarter choices than others, but I'm just going to go with the default option here. Um, I am not behind any kind of proxy whatever. And um, so now it's downloading more stuff. So feel free to fast forward through this part. I will not be offended. It's retrieving a bunch of stuff. Preparing, blah, blah, blah. There's something interesting that we can look at besides staring at this. Maybe we could look at slash dot. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm, this is about college. Looking beyond universities to source talents. Tech-heavy industries are constantly looking for new sources of innovations, but where are the best place to find them? Where, where are, yeah, okay, so um, the grammar is not always the best on Slashdot. Increasingly, businesses are looking beyond universities and source ideas from savvy high schoolers. Case in point, high school programming team finished, this guy is not a native English speaker, high school programming team finished in the top five of MasterCard's next API challenge. And what does that mean? Do you have other good examples on how to encourage high Okay, it finished. All right, um, so this is just asking you if you want to automatically send errors to Debian. I'll let you make your own decision there, follow your own conscience. And what do we want? Um, you know, you can, if you want to pick some other things, actually, we're going to manually install the SQL database, so I'm going to leave that blank even though we do want one. 
and I'm going to I'm going to hit the tab button once. If you want to fill one of these in, hit the space bar. I'm going to hit tab once and that highlights continue and then I press return. This is kind of interesting. If you guys you guys know anything about bitcoins, um, so this guy you've probably heard about, or maybe you ha haven't heard about the guy who got arrested, um, the person who founded Silk Road, which was a website where you can uh, purchase illicit things like you know hallucinogenic mushrooms and heroin and steroids and stuff like that. Um, this guy got arrested, Ross uh, Olbricht, and he had been keeping all of the money that he'd been making from his illegal website in this virtual currency called Bitcoins. And they think that he had in the range of $80 million worth of Bitcoins, but now nobody knows where they are. And so this is kind of an interesting thing about Bitcoins, like where are they? <laughs> So a Bitcoin is produced by some processor intensive um, crypto mathematical uh, type thing. So you can produce a Bitcoin, but it takes computational power. And um, so this guy had $80 million worth of them. And what it really is, is information. It's not on the web anywhere. It was on his personal computer these cryptographic codes that constitute the vi virtual currency are somewhere on his computer, which is encrypted. And uh, so they don't even know that it's on his computer. You know, his computer was encrypted and presumably they haven't been able to hack into it yet. Who knows? I guess this guy was probably a pretty smart hacker. Um, but once they, uh, well, what he could have done is is put the data corresponding to the bitcoins, like all these all these secret numbers that were produced by this cryptographic process. He could have saved them on a flash drive, and put them in a safety deposit box under a different name or something. Actually, he he we they know that he had um, on his own website bought some some fake IDs. Um, so maybe he hid the bitcoins on some flash drive somewhere. Uh, I wouldn't that be wouldn't that be interesting if there was some flash drive like buried in the desert that's worth eighty million dollars? Uh, could be. Probably it's just on his laptop though. If you look at the comments for this article, people say that they're just going to lock him in a room and beat him with a rubber hose until he says what the password is. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to edit out this part of the video. But I guess I didn't. If you're listening to it, I left it in. And I wasted all this hard drive space on YouTube. The data from this video that actually contains no information whatsoever. What it's doing now is it's downloading and installing a bunch of packages for the operating system that were not uh, included in the ISO. And as you can see, it takes a while. Actually, I'm just going to stop the video and restart it when this whole thing is over.